Hi guys, hope you're well. Today I want to talk about spirituality and how I believe our spirituality is under attack right now. And I just want to go through a few name origins and meanings as well. So spirituality is always a pretty general concept as I find, but it is coming up more and more, especially as how I personally think our spirituality is really being directed in a certain direction. And most, most often this direction is taking your power away. And also how uh, spirituality is containered into institutions such as religions or the New Age deceptions or other ones, other cult-like institutions as well. Now, I do want to say before we go into what it actually means and a few examples, I do want to say I personally think that we have our innate spirituality, that everyone has the spirituality, by the way. It's not just maybe that person, maybe the other one, maybe the person uh, that believes in something, but we all have this innate spirituality. Instead, what they're trying to do is they want us to give it away or to kind of just the ludicrousy of trying to pray to other entities or pray to an over God or anything really, depending on the religion that you believe in. And the word spirituality comes from Christianity, by the way. So I'm just going to say praying to a God um, no matter what entity this is, and hoping for things to work out in our favor without any sense of direction or self-responsibility of life. And I find this is true, especially in religion and also in the new age. So um, we just had a few holidays. I want to say, you know, when you're watching this, we just had Easter. We just had a few others, depending on your religion. And I was just so, so surprised. I know here in the U.S., I don't know if it has to do with them just being more brainwashed into it because religion is separated from the school. And so you really have to, you either grow up that way with your parents somehow, or somehow in your life, when you grow up here, you just find to Christianity because you want some sort of group and you want to belong to something. But I really don't know what it is in the U S I've always found in the U S people do not question Christianity and religion in the same way that they typically do in Europe. Now, what I do find very interesting is that I've also seen a rise of religion in other European countries, such as in the UK and a few others too. And so when I was going through just random Instagram stories and posts, because I'm following a few of the British creators, you know, all of a sudden I see a very large amount of, oh, he has risen or <laughs> other insinuations towards, you know, Easter and Easter, like the Good Friday and Easter Sunday and everything. I'm like, what? I've never seen this ever. Like, I'm, I was really surprised I saw this uh, posted by UK or European creators. And I was just like, what am I missing here? You know, I know I've been a bit out of the loop maybe over these past few years. But I just found, I saw this rise of religion both here in the U.S. and also in the U.K., possibly a few other countries. And if it's not religion, by the way, it's the rise of New Age elsewhere. Uh, and for some, it's one and the same. You know, some people who used to be in this New Age deception, obviously during virtue and others are the prime example of that. But some people who used to be in that are now completely converted to so-called Christianity or vice versa even, or maybe some people believe in both. I know some people, uh, they believe in spirit guides, but then still go to church and all of the things, or they pray until uh, onto angels and archangels. And it's one of the same thing. You find similar concepts in both religion and the new age, which I want to go through in this video too. So... Um, I found it very interesting that in these times, which may have gotten to some people, I'm not exactly sure, especially people who haven't really checked out the agenda yet or who don't really know how much creation power they themselves have. But I found in these past few years, maybe there was a rise in either religion or new age in some people. And I find that concerning because people are looking for this deeper meaning of spirituality. Look, they're looking for a deeper meaning in life, too. And we all are, obviously, but then they're being navigated in this direction where they're just giving their power away to the outside, to random entities, to an overall God entity, if it isn't Christianity, uh, maybe to a Buddha entity, if you believe in something else. You know, there's so many other entities and, and worshiping and beliefs that you can have. I can't possibly name them all in this video. 
uh, Hindu gods have been coming up too for some people, but that's a topic in and of itself almost because there are so many. So what is spirituality really? The word originally is an English word and it comes from Latin. So the word spirit is in spirituality. It comes from the Latin word spiritus, meaning breath. The word was loaned into Middle English in the 13th century through the old French espirit or espirit. In Christianity, a distinction was made between soul and spirit. The Greek word pneuma, pneuma, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it, was translated as spiritus in the Latin vulgata, vulgata instead of anima, which means soul, which was rendered psyche. So psyche, soul, which is also when people say psychic or psychotherapy and all those things, it actually has soul in it. This distinction between spirit and soul reflected in the Greek and Latin languages. It ultimately derives from Hebrew, which itself embodies a distinction between uh, ruach, which is breath, wind, and nefesh, soul. So it's very interesting that, you know, spirituality originally comes from Christianity. That's the overall religion it comes from. Yes, it is a Latin word, but as we know, or at least some people know that back then, in the, especially in the medieval ages, they just spoke Latin. It was just the language that they spoke overall, or just they, they were writing a lot in Latin, and that's how it carried on for so long, too. Um, I find it interesting that there's a distinction between soul and spirit, implying it's really not one and the same. And if we just go into a longer definition, there are related concepts to spirit in other languages, such as the German Geist, which is related to the English word ghost. The German, English, and Dutch are on the same language branch for people who did not know that yet. And Sanskrit uses the term akasha, so that comes from akashic records, right? And prana, which is breath. Similarly, both the Scandinavian languages, Chinese languages use the term breath to refer to the spirit. And in the Bible, the word ruach is most commonly translated as the spirit whose, ens whose essence is divine. So both spirit and soul is divine, basically. But there is this component of breath when you talk about spirit, meaning without breathing, you wouldn't be able to, to live through the spirituality. So maybe we'll only be, we're only able to experience the spirituality when we're actually alive here in, I don't want to say 3D, but that's where we are right now, when we're alive in wherever we are in this realm right now, right? Um, there's a historical background, so I'm just grabbing this from random articles online. The belief in spirits is closely tied to the ancient concept of animism, which attributed spirits to everything in nature, including human beings, animals, plants, and rocks. It was widely believed that spirits were composed of a misty, airy, or subtle material. Anthropologists speculate that this may stem from early beliefs that spirits were, were the person within the person, most noticeable in ancient cultures as a person's breath, which upon exhaling in colder climates appears visibly as a white mist. So when you look at these movies where maybe a person passes and the spirit is trying to exit the body, you know, if you've ever seen those type of movies, I know I have, I'm not sure how old they were, if they were from the 80s or 70s even. Um, but you have those movies where they're actually trying to depict the spirit leaving a person and that's in the form of this misty white fog also very interesting um this belief may have also fostered the metaphorical meaning of breath in certain languages such as the latin spiritus and the greek pneuma in the bible god is depicted as animating adam with a breath what's also interesting is if you do not eat and you do not drink you can survive for several days but how long can you really survive without breathing? Some people can survive longer than others, but on average is anywhere between three to seven ish minutes from my understanding. So also very interesting. Um, you know, you need to breathe from moment to moment. If you stop breathing, you're going to stop living too. So I strongly believe that spirit, especially going through all of these definitions, that spirit is very closely tied to us living right here in this moment to us actually being alive. Um, and the soul, with the soul, it's not necessarily like that because the soul is a bit more endless. You know, it kind of goes through these different realms and, and it doesn't really stop. 
when we pass on or when we die in the current incarnation that we are in or wherever we are. Um, here's a few more spirituality. So for, I want to make that distinction. Soul and spirit are not the same thing, but they are existing right now. They are coexisting. They are, they are right now. We have both. Some people have both. Hopefully you have both if you're watching this video. And you know, what's also interesting is when you, when you talk about alcohol and liquor and spirits, that's the same word that's from Latin spiritus an entity, right? So it could very well be that some spirits are entities or entities are trying to take over the spirit, such as when you go to church or all of these religious institutions or when you worship the New Age deception. Spirituality derives from the Latin word spirare and spiritus, which means soul, vital principle, and breath. That in medieval Latin is called spiritualit. That is the English equivalent of spirit, which means the soul, and is also equivalent to the Greek word and the French words as we had before. It's derived from the old French spirit, which comes from the Latin word spiritus, soul, ghost, courage, vigor, breath. So we're getting a few more definitions here, soul and ghost and courage. So they are putting soul in the same translation sometimes, but it doesn't appear to be the same. And it's related to spirare, to breathe. In the Vulgate, the Latin word spiritus is used to translate the Greek and the Hebrew words. Um, and here's another one. Spirituality is now generally thought to be native to anyone, whether they are religious or not. The concept also has a long history. The word originated in Christianity. Very important. It didn't originate in any, any other language. The spiritual was originally contrasted with fleshly, which means worldly or contrary to God's spirit. This contrast remained common until the European Middle Ages. What is spirituality examines how the definition of spirituality has changed and looks at contemporary definitions. Today's spirituality concerns what is holistic, involves a quest for meaning, is linked to thriving, and asked for a self-reflective existence as opposed to an unexamined life. With that, there is a number of religions such as Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and so on. Okay, so... You know, I do think spirituality is hijacked in that sense. And I had this one experience. I was walking around my neighborhood and it was, I don't know which type of mass it was, but I was very curious just to check it out. And usually when I check those things out, I, I can literally only stay for a few moments, by the way. So I make sure that I'm always seated in the very back because I know I will have to exit very quickly uh, when something just feels really off. Um, I didn't realize that this particular church, I think they were Catholic. I don't think they were Protestant or any other de denomination. And Catholicism is the worst Christian church, by the way. The others are pretty bad, too. But we're going to go through the meaning of Catholicism and why it's so bad, too. And the, Va the Vatican, all of it is tied to it. It was a Catholic church. Um, there is a Spanish-speaking community here, has been here for a few decades. So they do sometimes have mass in Spanish. And I walked into one of their Spanish masses. Um, and I even thought that was way more powerful than actually fully understanding what was going on because I was able to just pick up on the energy and the vibes instead of focusing on the words and being distracted by the English words. I was just kind of toning out, you know, because with the Spanish, it's like, okay, I mean, if I really try to listen, I would understand a lot, but I really just wanted to pick up on the energy. So I walk in. They're already full on. And I think this was a good Friday mess. They were already full on trying to reenact how Jesus Christ died on the cross and all of those things. And they were pretty hardcore. You know, they were actually reenacting it with fake blood and everything. And, and that's just, I mean, it must be traumatizing for kids who are watching that, first of all. So they're in their mass. And I just look around and I see how hypnotized people are. This was a type of mass where you have to get up every few seconds. And like I said, I was just focusing on the energy of it. So I didn't really pay attention. I, basically all the time I just sit, sat still. I didn't get up. <laughs> I was like out of protest. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not paying a part in this hypnotizing. I'm going to be that one person. And I know for the Hispanic and Latin community, it's so rude when you don't do what they want you to do. But I didn't care because for me, it's really compromising yourself when you do something you don't want to do, right? 
So everyone around me, every few seconds, they were saying their little phrase and then get up, get down. And then it was kind of hardcore where you even had to kneel on the floor and pray for something. I have no idea. I didn't do it. But me just watching the people during this mass and paying attention to how hypnotized they really were and how they just do whatever because a person or three people on the podium tell them to do that. It was mind blowing. Like that entire 20, 25 minutes that I spent inside and the mass took like two hours, by the way, but I was out after 25 minutes. I had enough it, like grown adults, grown men, grown women. I understand that the kids do it because their parents tell them to do it. Of course, they're not going to say no or question their lives, right? Because they're children, they're being programmed by the environment around them. But having grown men and women, uh, having older people, having younger people, like people my age, like every single thing, sit there in this mass, which the more I was participating in it, the darker it felt, by the way, it literally felt like these dark entities were trying to take over. And what wasn't helping is the incense that they were having there too. I feel part of church and the incense that they use in there, yes, yeah, some are good for psychic attacks for sure, but some actually get more spirits into that. And I've also, also already found that in other uh, types of masses that I attended throughout my entire life, that there's something really dark with the incense they use, the type of candles they use too, by the way, um, and just the entire spell work that's going on. And you don't realize it is spell work, but when 100, 200, 300 people are repeating what this person at the podium is saying, it's a spell that they're causing or evoking. So very severe psychic attacks. And of course, the day after I was completely, de I, I know it's, it's always a psychic attack when I'm completely dehydrated after I had to pull out some entities, like usually it's snake entities after church, by the way. Um, but I'm fine because I know what I'm getting myself into and I know the cost of it. Now, other people who go there every single year or every single week, even like I can't even imagine how 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 much they're being directed by these entities and how hypnotized they are when in this entire scenario. So that was just one of the yeah, that was just one of the scenarios where I was like, I have to make a video on. I have to tell people how hypnotizing this entire thing is. And, and I will never understand as someone who's never really gone to church when I grew up either. Like luckily my family in and of itself, we didn't do much of that. Maybe like a few times, like whenever people had their communion or whatever, we do it just to do them a favor. But we never really were any of those in Germany and as in and of itself, it's the least religious country in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. So it kind of fits in. But as someone who didn't really grow up with that and then coming to a country like this, where it's really brainwashed full on in your face, <laughs> I think one of the first experience I had here together with another German friend is we were trying to make friends somewhere in the park. And the only friends we were able to make that day was this church group from Harlem. <laughs> and until we realized that they were trying to recruit us for their gospel and church group, we were like, no, this is not our thing. This is almost like a cult, you know, it's like 15 plus years ago or something. It was just hilarious. Like the way we looked at each other once we realized what was going on. Uh, yeah, we've never said goodbye that suddenly. Um, so there is something majorly wrong here. And obviously when you go to these Spanish speaking countries, you see churches all over. It doesn't matter if you're like in Spain, in actual Spain, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in Mexico and Colombia and Guatemala and Costa Rica, like all of these, they have churches all over and people actually attend those masses too, which is even more scary and more frightening. Um, now not, not every single person, but I do have, for example, I do have a few Mexican friends who actually are Mexican. They're still living there. They grew up there who I've seen this change over the past 15 plus years or almost 20 years where, you know, we were, uh, we were just younger. We didn't really care much about those things at all. And then over these past seven ish years or so, one of them became extremely religious because she also had a tough life and everything. And, you know, she was left by someone. She's like a single mom, all of those things, which is really frowned upon in, in Mexico in certain Mexican areas, not all over Mexico. Um, but she was, she just completely turned 180. Like she was from one of the least religious people. She turned into this extremely religious person. And I was just like scratching my head, even five, six years ago. I'm like, wow, what is going on? Well, like just with younger people in general too. So there is this form of 
hypnotization and maybe pressure by other people around them that makes them do that. But I do think if you just question your reality from the start, you should be good from that. It is important to note the type of psychic attacks that happen in these institutions, though. Now, if you go to the word Catholic, the origin actually comes from whole, and which is katos or kato. And whole, every time I read that, I always have to think about maybe they're hijacking the wholeness of us. The, world, the word Catholic comes from the Greek phrase, can't pronounce that, on the whole, according to the whole, or in general, and is a combination of the Greek words about and whole. I can't pronounce the Greek words. The first known use of Catholic was by the church father, St. Ignatius of Antioch. Antioch is in Turkey, by the way, in his letter to the so-and-sos. Um, other forms are Catholicly, or when capitalized, Catholic refers to the Catholic church. With a lowercase c, Catholic means universal and inclusive. Which is also interesting, because when you actually observe Catholic people, they are the least inclusive people I know. I think the, mo the more inclusive people are like the Lutherans or Protestants, but certainly not the Catholics. And the Catholics are also the ones that want you to adhere to the Pope and everything. And if you don't, you're out of their church, which is exactly why Martin Luther founded the Lutheran church, because they had enough of the not so inclusive Catholics. Um, if you listen to anything like music wise from the Baroque and on you have a Catholic taste in music there's like these different definitions of Catholic now I already posted this on my social media but I came across this one this one picture or article saying that the the oldest bible in the world is from Ethiopia it is still older than I mean it's still pretty young because it's from around three or four hundred but that particular Bible in Ethiopia, because the regular one, the King James one, which is from the year 1600, so very, very new, the Ethiopian Bible has 88 to 100 plus books, as opposed to what? The 66 books that the other Bible gives you. And 66 is the satanic number that they use too. So it's interesting that the other one has anywhere from 80 something to 100 books, so way more books overall. Another interesting fact is the Vatican, and I can barely speak while I'm even talking about this. The Vatican comes from the Latin Vaticanos, which is the Vatican Hill, or from Vaticana, Vaticinari, which is to prophesy and to prophecy oracle. Or it comes from soothsayer and prophet, or it comes from to sing. Um, to be excited, inspired, and possessed, which is the Proto-Indo-European. So Vatican can actually mean to be excited, inspired, and possessed. <laughs> Pretty crazy if you think about that. Um, Vatican in itself means the headquarters in Rome where the Pope resides or the government where the Pope resides over to. For people who didn't know, the Vatican is on the Holy See, S-E-E, -E, which is a country in and of itself, meaning if you've been to both Italy and you've been to the Vatican, you've been to two different countries, technically. And I don't know if it's the smallest country or if uh, Liechtenstein is smaller than that, but basically it's a country in and of itself. Um, C means in German, water, and also in other languages. And when I tapped into the Vatican, I think I tapped into this three-ish years ago or two plus years ago, I uh, got to every time you tap into the Vatican, you get severely uh, psychically attacked. By the way, they don't want you to see anything related to that area at all. So I was trying to remote view or just tap into it. I saw this library of souls underground, so underwater, basically like this this library of souls, not spirits, but souls floating around underwater. So they have like the soul trap in the light, and the, not the Akashic library form, but similar to it. So they have their own library system. Which is also interesting because the library is a thing everywhere. You know, you used to have this huge library in Alexandria, which Alexander the Great built and all of that. And then you had other libraries all over the world. So I do think the concept of a library where something is stored, like knowledge is stored or things are stored, it comes from somewhere too. And the Vatican has this huge soul library, which happens to be in water underground. Water keeps coming up over and over again too. It's 
seems to be taken over parts of the world, be it in form of floods or the opposite droughts or ice or even mold To Mold is a separate consciousness of itself. And I spoke about that back in 2020 already because mold has become increasingly an issue in a lot of parts of the world. Um, but mold is related to water and humidity. And what I also find very interesting is a lot of these new ages, they're talking about water quite recently over this past year or so. It's almost like they're running the water program with people and people don't really know what they're talking about. It is correct. Water has a power, obviously. Um, you can change the water molecules by intention, by your words, by all of those things too. But there is more to this water theme. And I think there's there's something darker behind that too, at least because of people just pushing that so so frequently lately. But I feel there's also, you know, of course, there's always a holiness to all these elements too. So I just find it interesting that water has been coming up a lot lately. Um, another thing, which I might mention in a video in the future, just because it's so interesting, the Vatican has, or the Sistine Chapel has a VIP key masters tour and it's called open the Sistine Chapel you can get it you can find it online uh it's 500 plus us dollars as I'm looking it up right now so it's not something everyone would necessarily do I don't know how long it takes I think it's a few hours but basically for the first time ever I'm just reading this off what they say the Vatican museums are allowing guests to travel with the key master. So you have to just take this in, you guys. The Vatican has a key master. And what is on the flag of the Vatican? Those two keys. As I already said in a different video, who has the keys out? The Vatican has a, like at least one, if not more. Key. Maybe they even have two keys out. But the Vatican is a part of this entire matrix reality. And they have the keys out, meaning the way out. Um, and they're rubbing it in your face by displaying these keys. So, you know, they have a key master. They perform their daily ritual, opening up the extensive network of galleries, including the Sistine Chapel. Just look at all of those paintings in the Sistine Chapel. I just want to go there in person to see it, to just to see what type of rituals they have. I've been there once before, but I wasn't able to appreciate it at that point because it was right before Easter, it's like 10 plus years ago. The lines were horrendous. Um, so you can go there for two hours. And what exactly do they do? Just before the sun rises over Rome, a small group gathers for a truly once in a lifetime experience. Soon they will greet the Vatican's museums, the Vatican Museum's key master, the individual responsible for opening the seemingly endless web of galleries filled with some of the world's most pristine works of art, including the Sistine Chapel. You enter with a group of 20 or less, and it's called the VIP Key Masters Tour. Open the Sistine Chapel. It's the only kind of tour that they have. Um, we are, so it's the only tour of its kind. We are one of a few select tour operators of Vatican City. You pass through the Pope's Palace. The lights flicker on, illuminate works by Raphael Michelangelo, and other master artists, which Michelangelo is Archangel Michael, right? Angelo, Angel, Angel, Michael, Michel, Mich Michel. I mean, Michelangelo is basically a reversing Angel Michael, which is Archangel Michael. And also interesting name for a so-called artist who's pushed everywhere through the mainstream um, and other master artists. An official Vatican guide joins as well, adding color and character to these hallowed halls. Along the way, they will introduce you to famed frescoes, marble sculptures, and artifacts of grandiose proportions. You won't have the daily crowds. You will appreciate the time and space given in one of the world's most revered spaces. Yeah, right. One of the most, one of the darkest spaces. They forgot to say that. Um, so you're going to follow this key master. Very interesting. And the only reason I came across this, by the way, is because I'm following this one girl. She has like a travel blog and she was bragging how she was be actually, she actually took part in this a few months ago and she was writing a blog post on it and everything. And all I could think about is, wow, that is crazy. How regular people literally have no clue what's going on. You know, it's being rubbed in your faces, like how these normal people like the travel blogger and others they're participating in these rituals. They're participating in this stuff. 
Um, they have no idea what these symbols really mean and how they're keeping us with those hypnotized, but they're also giving us all the clues. You know, like I said, you're giving consent by not saying no or not saying I reject this reality. So they're giving us the clues. Um, they're hypnotizing us with the two keys that are on that flag. They're having this key master tour. And yet you have people actually participating in this who have no idea what it means, you know? Um, and so that's how they keep the masses hypnotized, basically. Thought it was a fun share. And I hope this makes sense. Let me know, have you participated in the key master tour or anything else? Um, if not, if someone wants to, it would be interesting to know if someone actually wants to participate. And uh, what are your thoughts on this spirituality, the Catholic, just any type of religion, really? Um, I hope this has helped and follow along. If you're new to this channel, welcome here. We're going to discuss many more things. Until then, have a good one. My name is Laura from Shamanic Self at shamanicself.com.